Good evening all, I'm Lionel Bienvenu and welcome to Denver 7 Sports sponsored by Ramos Law. All right, we have an all Colorado show for you tonight. All local, all the time. We have Colorado soccer in the World Cup with Sophia Smith from Windsor and Lindsay Horan from Golden putting on a show on the world's biggest soccer stage. And we've got Colorado football as Sean Payton takes the stage in Broncos country. And that's where we start tonight. Broncos rookies have already reported to training camp and the entire team starts working out on Wednesday. It is a complete teardown all the way to the foundation here and it's a total rebuild from the ground up after the nightmare season of last year. Sean Payton was hired to fix all these problems that reared their ugly heads when the Broncos hired a first year head coach in Nathaniel Hackett. Payton comes in to fix the broken system of Russell Wilson over here and the rest of the team over there. Peyton's coming in not to experiment with some new things, see how they work. He's coming in with a system that already works and has won a Lombardi trophy. So buckle up, Broncos country. It's going to be a wild ride. All right, let's bring in Broncos insider Troy Rank and sports anchor Nick Rothschild. As boys, it is just about on here for training camp. Troy, uh, before we get going, let's start with some business as the Broncos made a bunch of moves on Sunday. Yeah, this always happens prior to camp with injured players. So now you have Baron Browning going on the pup list. He is going to miss time in the regular season because of knee surgery. He was joined on that list by Kendall Hinton. Hinton had a minor scope on his knee. He had told me he hoped to be ready and cleared for camp. He clearly needs more time. And KJ Hamler and Mike Purcell on the non-football injured list all can come back at some point soon, but Browning would be one who's going to miss time during the regular season. Stuff to keep an eye on. K.J. Hamler needs to come back fast because it is a real competition in that wide receivers room. Well, last year at this time, guys, we sat up here on this very set with cautious optimism and excitement. Gone were Vic Fangio coming in, Nathaniel Hackett, a young, bright, innovative offensive coordinator full of energy and enthusiasm. Uh, we had our Pro Bowl quarterback coming in and Russell Wilson, right? All new coordinators, coaching staff. Everybody was young and hungry. And it all went straight into the gutter in game one at Seattle. Nick, you are young and hungry and full of enthusiasm yourself. <laughs> How are you feeling about a complete turnaround as Sean Payton takes over as head coach? Well, I, I feel like <laughs> not young and enthusiastic. I'm feeling quite old right now, actually. And I'd have to start by disagreeing with you, honestly. Cautious optimism, Lionel. Where did you see that? The minute Russell Wilson said in his opening press conference that he expected multiple championships here in Denver, this entire state turned into a Baptist church. Hallelujah! Our Savior is here! And then, as you mentioned, the season was a wet fart. So I think a lot of Broncos fans are approaching all of what's happening right now with a uh, fool me twice, shame on you sort of attitude. There is optimism about Sean Payton, but we're going to have to see it in real live action before we get tricked into believing in these guys again. There's no doubt that um, training camp is going to be different for Russell Wilson. I mean, he's got a new head coach. He'll have a new system. Uh, he will not have his own personal quarterback coach out there, uh, his entourage, his video team. I mean, last year at times he would go during practice over to his family and hug his kids. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett would go over to Sierra and the kids after practice. They would do pictures and videos like reality TV stars on Bravo, the real housewives of Dove Valley. I mean, it was crazy. Troy, this will not be happening this season. No, Sean Payton's already said it's not going to be a situation where Russell Wilson has his quarterback coach in the building. He's not going to have his office in the building. Now, a lot of quarterbacks have offices in the building. The issue was he became distant from his own teammates because of the losing, because he had too much power. What you're going to see is very similar to Mike Shanahan. Everything runs through Sean Payton. And frankly, Russell Wilson has been humbled. He needs the guardrails. And where I am optimistic that it could work is because because there's going to be complete buy-in from Russell Wilson. Where the pessimism comes in, and Nick is right to be cautious about this, Russell Wilson's going to be 34, turning 35. His last 24 games, 31 touchdowns, 16 picks. Is he in decline, or does he just need a new coach? We're going to find out early in the season. Yeah, we talk about Russell Wilson and Sean Payton and the relationship between those two and Russell buying in, all important. But what's going to be important is the scheme as well. And we're talking about a running game. Right, Troy? Uh, we've talked about this ad nauseum this offseason. Uh, last year, the Broncos running attack, uh, Latavius Murray, Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams, ranked 21st in the NFL. This year, Murray and Gordon are gone. Javante is coming off a serious knee injury. 
Troy, will this Broncos rushing attack be better than last season? Yeah, it's going to be better because they're going to commit to it. As a play caller, Sean Payton will commit to this running game. You look at his last five years in New Orleans, and you watch those games, Lionel. They're top ten in almost every rushing category. Yards per attempt, attempts per game, touchdowns in the red zone. So they're going to commit to it. Good news, we talked about the guys who are injured. Javante Williams was not on the pup list to start, so he will be out there. Tim Patrick will be out there. He's a great blocker in the run game, but they're going to emphasize it. I still think Samaj P. Ryan carries the load until October. That's when Javante Williams would be a year removed from knee surgery. So be fair to him, fans. Give him some time, but they're going to commit to the run, and they're going to be physical. It all starts up front. That's where they're going to try to punch you in the mouth. And finally, for the first time since Peyton Manning, have an offensive identity. Right, okay. This, that last point, I think, was the one that you needed to make first. The Troy, offensive I line part? Right. I, yeah. don't, I don't think Javante Williams really matters. He's a great running back. We've this seen it in spurts when he's healthy. He can yards. be a difference maker. But the NFL is telling you that running backs are kind of a dime a dozen right now. Saquon Barkley doesn't have a deal. He's one of the best in the game. This Broncos offensive line looks to be much improved. They finally seem to have solved that right side of the line with Ben Powers and Mike McGlinchey. This is going to be a powerful full run-based offensive line attack. And I think what Sean Payton is hoping, Troy, is that with his scheme and those guys up front, they can put anybody back there and run the football and protect Russell Wilson that way. And if they can, this offense is going to be much improved regardless of who's in the backfield. And you talk about offensive identity, Troy. That identity is McGlinchey, Powers, Bowles, the Miners. whole offensive line. <laughs> Punching people in the face up front, right? All right, quarterback, offensive line. I would say the next most important position is Ed Rusher, right? You got to affect the other team's quarterback. Draymond Jones led the Broncos with six and a half sacks ah. last season. Uh, he's gone. Uh, Bradley Chubb was second with five and a half sacks. He's gone. Baron Browning was third with five sacks. He's on the physically unable to perform list. <laughs> the top three are gone. Troy, if one of the big keys to success is getting pressure on the quarterback who will be the key players for the Broncos here it has to be Randy Gregory you're paying him to be a star he's got to stay on the field in September when he was available he was a disruptive player he was having more big plays than Shakespeare when he's out which is a lot he's not helping you then he came back he was disinterested and hurt with his knee I love his insight his intellect but he's got to be available if he's not they're in trouble because then Frank Clark we love him in the playoffs he hasn't done a lot in the last three regular seasons about six sacks per regular season so keep an eye on the x-factor being Jonathan Cooper some are saying Nick Bonito I say Jonathan Cooper as an x-factor as an edge rusher oh, x-factor it's got to be Zach Allen right that guy is going to be a monster on the inside if they can keep production on the outside right Zach Allen is a terrific interior run player and he's a great pass rusher from the inside but he needs help he needs the threat of a Randy Gregory or a Frank Clark or a Baron Browning who I think this was just set up to be a huge year for Baron unfortunate about the injury hopefully he can come back but my guy on that on that front entirely in that front seven is Zach Allen I think he's going to have a huge season all right uh, there is one major competition in camp they're going to keep an eye on and that is kicker <laughs> oh I mean, my they God. look three or four games a year are decided by a field goal kicker right yes. last seconds uh, a a two-point game with five minutes to go. Your kicker's warming up on the sideline. Who is it going to be? Nick's got the answer. <laughs> Who do you got, Nick? Maher, I hardly know her. Maher, it's yeah. not. Look, it's not going to be Brett Maher. He, may, he missed, what, four kicks in the playoffs? Five, five, five kicks. Five no, it's not. Five look, out of, look, five out of look at me. Look, bring it to this camera. Look at me, Denver. It's not going to be Brett Maher. I'm not sure the kicker is on the roster right now. I'm really not. I wouldn't be shocked the you know, week before the first game. It's somebody else. But I would give Maher, as much as it pains Nick, a slight edge because his resume is way better than Fry if you take out his one Chuck Knobloch type yips -ish issue. No, d discount it and new Broncos owner Lewis Hamilton is going to go get fellow Englishman <laughs> and pal Harry Kane from Tottenham Hotspur <laughs> to come kick for the Broncos. Kane has said this is his dream. When he's done in the Premier League, he wants to kick for an NFL team. Come on, Harry. Come on, the air is nice up here. You can kick a 75-yarder if you want to. Dude, that would be like a, uh, <laughs> almost like a messy like signing yeah, here yeah. in Denver. You brought an EPL uh, <laughs> kicker into uh, Denver for the Broncos.